after Apsaras, Takar, Elia, and his band of 75 missionaries left Oxnan, they went onto the coast of Nishabad and acquired ships to take them to the islands of Gaul or Gaul, both spellings correct. After they had arrived in the island of Gaul, they went amongst the small tribes there and began their teaching. The Book of Gaul chronicles their stay there. We have arrived upon Gaul or Gaul and have come upon a friendly tribe of people that speak a language similar to the Lati tongue. Nonetheless, I am able to understand them and have no difficulty communicating with them. We have set up camp nearby and will help them repair their nets for fishing tomorrow as the best way to get anyone to want to be taught. The teachings is to start helping them with some task, and before long they ask you what your beliefs are and you are then free to tell them. Today we all worked repairing nets and helping with the fishing. This evening some of their elders asked after our religion and I began teaching. Soon more people came to listen and soon over a hundred people were staying in the moonlight listening to me teach. While many of the men went out in their boats to fish today, I stayed behind with the old men, women and children and taught. Near afternoon many Gaulics joined our faith. These people live in rock villages on the seashore. All the villages are surrounded by high walls, not against invaders, but against the onslaught of the sea, the waves and wind. In many ways, their villages look similar to Magog villages or the village of Oxnan, with the exception that the Gorlicks have wooden furniture and sleep in beds off the floor as the ground is damp in places and most of their floors are of dirt and sand. They haul their water from a well nearby. They do all their cooking and baking indoors. Inside of their houses, they have stone ovens near large fire pits. They have crude wooden tables and benches in which to sit. The men do all the fishing and the gathering of food. The women and children do all the water hauling, cooking, and the making of clothes. Their cloths are made of a very coarse material from a type of seaweed. In fact, all of their cloth is made from the seaweed. They use wild berries and nutshells to dye beautiful designs in this cloth. They have constructed a crude reed pipe which emits music from, and they dance to this music almost every night after each big catch, and the men return from the sea. We have been near this village for over a month. All the people in this village have joined the faith, and many Gorlicks from outlying villages have come and joined the faith. We have started building a larger ship, which one of the Gorlicks had designed, and will go deeper into the ocean and get larger number of fish. Some of the Hittions in my band are from Lemuria, Madana, Tulang, Izet, Tibet and Hatti, as well as Takar and Elia from Nishabad. So, with all of these people from different cultures, we will be showing them ways to better their life through farming, fishing, trading, and better ways of enjoyment and entertainment. After being here for six months, we have greatly improved the life in Gaul and are moving further inland to teach other tribes. We moved further on inland and set up our camp near another Gaulic tribe. They heard of our coming and spoke and told us they were eager to learn of the Hittion way. I began teaching right away, and the first day many people came forward to join the faith. We have been in this village more than three months and close to 200 people have joined our faith. Many talk of building a large temple nearby. We have begun building a large circular temple nearby. It will be aligned with all the stars, the sun and the moon. It will be made of stone and wood. Many of the people have gone to the seashore to select rocks for the building. They have been cutting and smoothing the huge slabs for months now and are ready to transport them to the temple site. The slabs of stone have been placed over logs. The slabs are pushed and pulled by hundreds of workmen. As the slabs are pulled and pushed forward, more logs are put down in their path. It is slow, hard work, but the slabs are nearing the temple site daily. The slabs have finally arrived at the temple site many months later after coming from the sea now begins the task of raising them up. We have decided to build a large wooden derrick in which to raise the stones. So many persons have traveled north to cut trees and transport them to the temple site. After another six months, our derrick is finally built and we have begun the task of raising the stones in place. The stones are as large as a house and weigh many tons. It will be a temple that shall last for thousands of years, a monument to the Creator. The temple builders work daily, I teach daily, and the rest of the populace go about their daily life. Every day the temple takes on new form. Within a few more months it should be finished. Today was a day of celebration, as the temple was finished after two and a half years in the building. It has a large wooden roof constructed from the derrick which lifted the stone into place. A large stone altar is in the very center. 
Some slabs lay upon the portals of the upright stones. Smaller upright stones border in three large circles outside the main temple. A ring of holes have been dug beyond these in which grain is to be stored for the poor. These will have small wooden roofs over them. They have named the temple after me. They call it the Apsaras Temple, and I dedicated it for them. Hundreds of people came from miles around for the dedication services. They have begun to make a fence of stone and wood that will go from this temple to another one they plan to build on the northeast coast. Slabs of stone will set upright every few feet and be connected by wooden fences. It will be a kind of holy way, they say. There are hundreds who have joined the faith. Eliah is an archbishop now, and tomorrow in the temple, Taka is to become a caliph. Hundreds of people came from all over emissaries that had heard of the ordination weeks ahead from Nishabad and Lati have come to the ordination. By the time the high mass for the great ceremony of ordaining Takar to Caliph had arrived, more than 1,000 persons were on the plain nearby and many were packed into the temple itself. The mass was very long. Takar received the holy sacrament, took his vows, and was ordained Caliph. I also appointed him my first Caliph as he is with me constantly. At this same service, Eliah was ordained a matriarch, and I have turned the Gorlick branch over to her. She says she may stay here when I leave. Two months after Eliah was ordained matriarch, she married a Gorlick Hidian Grand Titan in the temple. Takar married them, and I gave my blessings to them. Takar says he will not marry, as he feels he can better serve the religion by being unattached. This is the same reason I never married. It has been five years since Eliah married, and she has three fine sons. She named her first son after me. I'm greatly honored. I have been on the islands of Gaul for almost nine years and have covered all the islands, even the remotest of them. Everywhere I have gone, Gorlix joined the faith. Takar and I were ready to travel across another small sea to the land where he and Eliah were born. Eliah has decided to stay on in the islands of Gaul with her family and to teach. Takar and I shall miss her.